Y254. Imagine. Well, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for sticking with us right here on uh, Why in the Morning. My name is Ram Maguko. It's a pleasure being with you on this fine Tuesday morning. Remember, we are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are also streaming live through our website, and that's www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. It is all about matters concerning your health right here on Why in the Morning. And of course, even as we proceed with this morning conversation, we value your feedback. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. The hashtag as always is Why in the Morning at Ram Maguko, which is my handle. And the official session handle is at Y254 channel. Today is all about matters concerning your health right here on Why in the Morning. We want to talk about fire safety and burns. Uh, 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 right here on uh, Why in the Morning, Fire Safety and Burns Awareness. How safe are you in terms of fire procedures? How safe are you when it comes to safety? Assuming that fire broke out where you are right now. That's right. Where you are right now. What protocols do you have in place that you will follow to help you and your loved ones and those around you safe. If a fire broke out where you are right now, are you safe? Uh, let's talk about these matters concerning fire safety and burns awareness today. I am with Michael Gitau. He is the MD of Ethnomed Healthcare Incorporative Specialist. He is uh, an emergency care and safety specialist. Karibisana, Michael. Thank you very much. How are you feeling, my brother? I'm all right. It's Thanks good for coming. To be man. here. Thanks for coming. Yeah, it's been a while. But I know. I'm happy to be here. Huh? Yes. The last time you, you said you were at Hawaii it was two years ago. Was it two years? No, last year. Uh, yes, that was roughly around the ending of 2019 when we just had an outbreak of, uh, of, of COVID. Of COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we had a lengthy discussion here. That's mm. that pretty much of the time. Then a few times I know I've been invited, yeah, but yeah. I've not been within the country so yeah. i said well when i'm here why not I'll welcome come. back welcome back Asante, i appreciate your presence Asante. tell us something for somebody who's meeting you for the first time today mm -hmm. something a bit more about what you do mm -hmm. because i'm seeing you are from uh, also ethnomed healthcare yes and here we are to we, we, before we talk about matters concerning uh, uh, fire safety and burns yeah. um also tell us this the, the nexus between mm -hmm. these two also okay. something a bit more about what you do first okay mm -hmm. um as Mike, what he does out there, mm. um, an emergency care specialist, where I deal with the patients, mm -hmm. and when I'm not doing that, I'm also in sensitization. Mm -hmm. So that's how do we sync that with Ethnomed Healthcare Inc. As an institute, we have majorly two branches, and one of them, as you see, as Ethnomed, we have integrated medicine and research in it. Uh -huh. So one side, mm. we do clinical research, mm -hmm. this is disease surveillances, and also we do investigation, perhaps the cases of imagining diseases. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. behind me, I have a very big team mm -hmm. of specialists, you know, uh, doctors who are specialists in different lines. Mm -hmm. Then up from the recent, and that's why I think I came here and we were discussing about some of these uh, outbreaks, like for example, infectious diseases. Yeah. It's because that's some of the things that we handle. Mm -hmm. Then, and we are able, once we do the research and analyze, we also now advise, be it uh, international bodies or even us here, at the, the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. The other section is that uh, we find that apart from being closed in in that, you know, uh, uh, sort of specialized group, then we also do training and advocacy. Mm -hmm. And these now do a lot of sensitization now to the public. And this is where we have occupational health and safety trainings coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have first aid coming in. We have fire safety coming in. Mm -hmm. We also do um, 
medical exam, fitness to work medical exam mm -hmm. for, for, for staff. So we have a specialist, a group that we work with as Ethnomed Healthcare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. that's, now, that's what we are. And, and, and now uh, mm. it brings us to this discussion today yes. on uh, fire mm -hmm. safety, mm -hmm. uh, burns awareness. Yes. Um, why is this important for the Kenyan youth watching us today mm -hmm. to listen? Why is it important for the Kenyan youth to listen to this particular discussion here, mm -hmm. fire safety? Because some might say, ah, just some, some, some an important, some less significant yeah. discussion. But yeah. it is something that is of value. Yes. Why? Now, we do realize, all of us, that a fire is a good master. Mm -hmm. However, he is also a very bad master. Mm -hmm. Which means, if you use it the right way, because we use it for various reasons. We use it for cooking. We use it for warming ourselves. Yes. We use it for industrial purposes. But now, if it is not controlled in the right way, then it becomes destructive. Mm -hmm. So this is what, uh, and more so we'll say these are called the life skills. Because you do not know when the fire will break out. Yes. When it becomes now the dangerous part of it. Mm -hmm. Now, it, that is the reason why we are coming and sensitizing. One of the key why is doing the fire safety and burns awareness. Because yeah. every time you have a fire, you are likely to get an injury. Yes. And these injuries, when they get to the hospital, I'll tell you what, to treat burns, it's one of very expensive very, very expensive mm -hmm. um, medical care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are coming into, why don't we do more of prevention than response mm -hmm. and the treatment? Yeah. And this yeah. is why now we started off these, it actually started quite a while because this forum, we have a forum as a fire safety and burns uh, awareness forum. Mm -hmm. And this forum is involved with different stakeholders because we realize uh, currently fire has been categorized as a disaster. So you realize that disaster cannot be managed by one entity, neither one group. Mm -hmm. So now we come in as different stakeholders. So we're talking about government ministries. Mm -hmm. We have uh, state and non-state actors, which are uh, non-profit faith-based organization. And these, just to mention a few, we have like um, the National Disaster Management Unit. That mm -hmm. is the wing of the national police. Mm -hmm. Because anywhere you have disasters, they do respond. Mm -hmm. So burns is one, the fires are one of the disasters. So this is why you chose this area of fire and burns awareness. Yes, and now uh, the other stakeholders we have now, like Burns Society of Kenya, mm -hmm. which now have the specialists who are you know surg surgeons who are uh, plastic surgeons yes, in yes, reconstructive yes. of that we have also kenyatta national hospital we have a burn unit mm -hmm. now ethnomed comes in as a stakeholder also because we supplement all right in terms of the education prevention also we have specialists who attend to these um, uh, cases mm -hmm. and now we also have uh, like cases of where you have the media fraternity they come in we have uh, Kenya Red Cross, we could have St. John Ambulance coming in, we have the Fire Brigade, all these are responders. We all respond to in this forum because all of us, we have a role to play. Mm -hmm. And that's why one of the, 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 the things that we do as stakeholders is to sensitize the community. Mm -hmm. So it has been an annual event. However, fires, it's not a one event. It is a frequent, and we have a lot of them happening a lot of them happen in they, the country. Yes, yeah, it is, yeah, it is, yeah. a, it is and, a big and, and this is why it's important to have this discussion here, my brother. Mm -hmm. and, and, and mainly, you mm -hmm. mentioned it earlier on, yeah. yes. uh, that it's a very expensive thing. Yes. Mm. Uh, and, and many Kenyans may not understand how expensive it, it may be yes. dealing with burns. Yes. Um, how, how bad can it be when it comes to uh, uh, you know, uh, dealing or treating okay. treatment of burns, okay. especially in the country here? Now, there is a big statistic that has been recorded now by um, like Kenyatta National Hospital yes. and also the Minister of Health. Mm -hmm. So we're finding at the year, every year you're finding approximately 200,000 patients. Two hundred thousand. Yes, and now these are the cases that are reported in the hospital because some don't necessarily even go to the hospital. Yeah, some decide to go for home treatment. Exactly. Now we have those who are severely injured. Those who are, get severe burns are the ones now you find mostly now in the maybe in the local hospitals like the level four within a certain county. Mm -hmm. But now also we have to refer to major hospitals like now Kenyatta National Hospital where we mm -hmm. have the burn center. Okay. Uh, if you talk to uh, specialists, especially the plastic surgeons, uh, when you're doing that process, dependence with the severity of that burn, is actually the bill will go into millions. One patient. 
Then if you look at the <laughs> it, yes one patient, wow. it will roll into a million, Bob. And now, because you have series of, 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 of um, well surgeries, treatment, follow-up uh, treatment, that is just the cost you're looking at. But now what happened, the effect of that burnt survivor? They're psychologically Psychological affected. They PTSD. have, yes, the, the post-traumatic stress disorder, yes, you'd say, but they are affected because it changes even their physical, how they look physically. Yeah. Because once you get a burn, uh, you never go back. It actually leaves a very big scar. And perhaps even yourself, if you ever got a burn when you were a child, mm -hmm. if you go back to the same spot, you'll find that scar There's there. There's a scar there. Yes. So and, 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 and people tend to try to adapt to yes. these scars in different ways. Some even get tattoos yes. to yes. cover it up. Exactly. It affects the self-esteem. Exactly. So you're not, you see how it is affecting. Then also, as just you mentioned about the case of self-esteem, mm -hmm. these, some of them, if it's their children, they're not able to integrate with the rest of the children, be it at schools, be it within the community. So that also has a very, very big uh, repercussion. Mm -hmm. So burns, um, the way we hear about the cases of fires, then we also we are looking at the, with the end result of the burns as well. Mm -hmm. So this is why the sensitization is key. Because right. a fire can be in your house, can be in your car, can be in a, you know, in a studio like this. Um, it can be in everywhere be it um, even out there to, the, to some of our communities where even we live. Mm -hmm. So it is our responsibility, it's actually everyone's responsibility to safeguard against outbreaks of fires. Let's talk about that now, mm -hmm. safeguarding. Yes. There are many different sources yes. of outbreaks, mm -hmm. sources of fire, yes. gas cylinders, mm -hmm. uh, uh, electrical Yes. Uh, d problems, mm -hmm. some, some wiring somewhere, or some, mm -hmm. some malfunction somewhere, yes. uh, power outages. Yes. So many different causes mm -hmm. of uh, 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 fires. Mm -hmm. And I want us to narrow this discussion down to mm -hmm. each one and how we can be able to prevent them. Okay. How can we ensure that our homes mm -hmm. are safe from mm -hmm. fires? Now, Again, the first point is prevention by acquiring skills yes. and getting knowledge. Mm -hmm. So be it as a parent, um, then they ought to lead the, ki the children in the setup. Parents lead children in the setup. Parent leading them because now you're the head. Yes, you ought to be the one teaching the children. I no. say, you know, parents are afraid. And as a chomeka, and as a umia, so they, they, they monotony of knowledge there. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way, like, for example, you can never go and sip a hot coffee or tea because yeah. perhaps your parents told you, you know what, you need to let it cool. Otherwise, you're going to get burned. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. You know that is a one or type of a burn as well? By it way, is. By a the way, it yes, is. it is. Although it, didn't, it, it doesn't hit me as one. Uh -huh. But, but you get burnt in your mouth. Yeah. And if you... You take perhaps a hot liquid like <laughs> Uji, mm. you'll feel it when it's going all the way down. Mm -hmm. It actually burns you. It is really burns in your gut. Yeah. Now, that's why it is a transfer of knowledge that helps us now at least to know what to do and what not to do. Mm. Now, if you went down to the specifically, one of the biggest, the number, let me just talk of the group that is highly currently reported in the Minister of Health, where you find the biggest number of burns are the age between two and five years. That's the highest. Even if you go to the burn center. Two and five. Yes, that's the biggest group they're going to find in the burn center. Why? Wow. Because it's a very active age. They don't even know they're in an invention stage. So because anything it, it, they... It, you know, someone may wonder, is it, yes. is it, is it the fault of the parent uh, mm -hmm. who is not creating a safe environment for the children for children aged yeah. between two and five to play around in mm -hmm. parents can end up blaming themselves that's you know? why you said now the parents they own the own the that home they ought to have the knowledge first mm. if you have a nanny or the house managers we call them yeah. they also need to be taught because some point we don't have these trainings most of the time in curriculums like perhaps i don't know which curriculums exactly. you did you might find um some of us perhaps they did a small segment either in campus or in colleges, or maybe just a mention, but not in depth or that in a training. Yeah. So we find out sometimes we forget. I, I remember these things. It, it, it was mentioned at, at, at some point yeah. in school, yes. but there is no weight given uh -huh. to it. Yes. 
So now, how do we prevent, like for example, we, we want to gain another causation is fires resultant of the gas, which is RPG. So there is a compliance actually released by the um, energy regulations, which now controls all the gas, that all the cylinders must comply. Then that when you're buying your gas cylinder, then you ought to get it from the authorized dealer. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it has to go through, you know, a quality uh, assessment. Mm. Does it have the right weight? Does it have a seal or the valve that is connecting well? Yeah. If there is a fault in it, where can you return it back? Mm. Then they will tell you when you go home how to connect it. Okay, mm. and even the tubing that you have, then you also have to check because it has durability also. Yeah. Yes. Now, if you don't have the right setup within that, then you're likely now to have um, an, an explosion out of it. Or someone just go and light it and there is, you know, there is, they're not lighting, uh, they just open the regulator and it is just leaking the air. Yeah. That fire is very, very devastating because now the gas comes in the air. Mm. So then again, slightly because it's lighter, it's hanging up here. So any slight of a spark, there's an explosion. So the gas cylinder is one of the biggest problem is that. But it's not because the cylinders are bad. It is now us who are using them that we are not following the regulations. Which, even if you go online, you're going to see all the steps. They are there. That mm -hmm. where you buy it, uh, it might, even you are told even to buy and you, and you retain a receipt. So that tells you if you have a problem, you have a dealer that you can go to. Mm -hmm. But most of us just make a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I, yeah, I, I that, can is with one, you there. that is one of the problems. So I'm not saying the gases themselves are bad. It's just how we manage them. We should have knowledge on how it we, is knowledge. how we buy, yes. how we use, how, and we, how we dispose. Exactly. How we buy, where we buy it from, how we transport it to our home, where we store it in our homes. Because we don't want to keep it everywhere. You keep on heating it. So it need to be in a safe area because remember it is gas. It doesn't need to be keep kept on moving every now and again. Mm. So those Should are the yes, those are the parameters. Now the other fires that you you talked about um, is uh, electricity. Yeah, electrical. Now electricity. All of us we use electricity in one way or the other. But the problem now comes in because of the faulty connections. It's not because of the electricity offs, mm. but it's because of faulty connection. Yeah. Um, the other day we were having an engagement with the Kenya Power and Lighting Company. Some of the things, the biggest problem we are facing within some uh, areas is um, you find that we have cables that are running all over within the community. That power, if you go and ask who connected that, is perhaps some smart guy within the estate who just came and connected wires and they are, you know, they're, they're hanging, hanging all over. One plot and yes, another. they're hanging all over. Mm. And it is not done the right way. So even if you have an appliance that you're using, be it maybe iron box, be it your toaster or juicer or, or any appliance or including the TV, the likelihood of the short circuit in it, that marks now of course what? Now the fire. Yeah. So that will then, then again because whoever is touching that electricity perhaps they, they are not trained technicians mm -hmm. electricity in terms of electrical wise, then they get electrocuted. Mm -hmm. Now electrocution it can kill you or can leave you with devastating injury because the currency when it flows into the human body you already have a currency right now that is flowing mm -hmm. because for your heart to operate there is a currency it's that a is current, working that is, yes yeah. so this comes outside is higher than the one that in the body so what happens most likely if it's the heart get hit it will stop cardiac yeah. arrest i get you then yeah. the yeah. pathway it will follow which is the nervous system it mm -hmm. will have an effect the damage this shock yes that's what now we call the electrocution Okay, so now that person who has been electrocuted, it either they can completely pass out completely, mm -hmm. they go into unconsciousness, or they can even die, depending on the voltage. So that is a preliminary when you're talking of electricity. So what I could um, encourage the rest is that mm -hmm. let's use electricity the right way, mm -hmm. have the, the certified electrician mm -hmm. to come and uh, connect you know, come and do the connection within the house. And this is the house or even at workplaces also. But, 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 but then there's that aspect of quality assurance. Yes. You know, there, 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 there is an electrician that yes. uh, my best friend has 
told me about that. You know, he's very good. He has this uh -huh. company. You yes. know, I, I, he, he gives you receipts. Uh -huh. He did it for my friend in, in, in I don't know, this place. Mm -hmm. I can bring him for you. You can also use this. How do you ensure quality? I have a story for that. Just a very quick one now. I, yeah. I had I, one time, I had a slight of a problem with my power in my house. Uh -huh. So every time you connect um, a special machine, I had this back a big computer. You remember the old stage, you know, this laptop. Yeah, so every yeah. time you connect, you could hear static noise coming from the main box. So that I called, could, yes. uh, Which we mostly ignore. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, from my perspective, I knew this, this, there must be something wrong. Uh -huh. So I called, I tried to look for an electrician I didn't find. So I called one of my friends, asked, hey, who fixes the electricity in your house? He told me, I have so and so. So I called this gentleman, he tells yeah. me, ah, I'm not there, but I'm sending you someone. So now yeah. you see the chain? Yeah. So yeah. This, this gentleman comes over to my house. and He um, tells me, okay, you have a problem? And I told him what a problem. He went straight to where he, so he told me, all right, give me a ladder. He went up there. Um, the behavior itself, because now I didn't do a due diligence, he went up there, then he's opening, and I, 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 I walked up straight to the, you know, out from the corridor, I went to the door. And I asked him, all right, how long have you been doing this work? He said, you know, my grandfather was doing it, my uncle was doing it, <laughs> I am doing it. This thing is running in our family. It runs in the family. <laughs> he touched, I don't know where he, what he touched. The next minute, the next few seconds, he's on the floor. <laughs> At this point, where were you standing? I was on the door because I suspected what he was doing. I so just felt it. Welcome, Lango. <laughs> watch a Mimi, I watch from far. He go knock down, he wake up and he asked me what happened. Aye. So between me and you, I don't know what happened. You're the one who touched there. So he told me. So Give he's me. asking you what yes, happened. Yes, what happened. So he basically got electrocuted. Wow. The reason is, is this was not a certified electrician. And I know currently there is a, even they have a certain body that regulates the certified technicians. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you just need to check, um, if you go online and you just Google, you see um, a certain number, you send a, uh, uh, their name through that short message and you get a re reply is this a certified or not a certified so get the name for example uh uh, uh the name samuel mm. i mean michael Gitau. yes so we send the name michael Gitau. yes to this particular number yes and they'll be able to respond to you whether they are certified or not electricians or, or not. not yes just the way it happened in the medical side they just need to like check my license number am yeah. i valid even or even for journalists the same, uh, the same, same thing. thing so it has Definitely been a electricians also have the same exactly wow. it is there it is just that uh, and, and there have been a lot of sensitization if you check with even kenya point if mm -hmm. you just go on their website you find all these instructions there mm -hmm. so these are some of the problems we're finding within the estates the other causations of fire bands uh, you find now within home setups is causation of um, liquids or chemicals mm. where they get the bands uh scalds. uh and this mostly is as a parent of the house managers who are with the kids how you know they manage the house so you're cooking and you're not observing what you're doing perhaps you're doing you're cooking your mandazi mm. and the kids are just running around, running around so whenever yeah. they dip in their hand there the next thing they get a significant or either mild or severe burn mm. so now it, it depends on what they were exposed to chemicals are very key also in industries so if you don't have the right uh, personal protective equipment, then you're exposed also to um, sort of bands, mm. uh, the, the chemical bands. So all these, I believe every company that is working and they have bands, uh, they, they, sorry, they, they have chemicals, then there is what is called the material safety data sheet. And this tells you the kind of the chemical that you have, mm. if they, anyone gets burnt or get exposed to, what are the procedures to be followed uh, from the decontamination, how to manage those burns uh, mild, uh, from, from the fasted level all the way until they're taken to the hospital. All right. Now, I want us to, 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 to uh, take a few steps back and yes. just go through some of these things that you've just mentioned there. Okay. Advice to parents. Mm -hmm. You have a two-year-old, three-year-old, yes. four, five-year-old. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you're saying that we need to decipher this knowledge yeah. to our children. Yeah. What would your advice be to that parent watching you today, mm -hmm. that young couple watching you that has a two-year-old child, yeah. and, and, and they want to make their home safe yeah. for this child, mm -hmm. especially now that we're having this conversation? Mm -hmm. Talk to them. Well, what I would um, first now 
uh, advise them. The, mm. We have so many sources of getting information and yes. knowledge. Mm. It, uh, some others can go to their cell phones, others could go even on internet and check all this information. Yeah. But we also have training institutions that can take you through the training also, mm -hmm. uh, where they come and demonstrate practically. If you get a band or someone get a band, what do you do? So next? You, they should go for training. They should go physical for the training. training. There should be yes for physical training. Like uh -huh. us in Ethnomed Healthcare, we also offer those trainings. Mm -hmm. And all other organizations, other stakeholders within the country, they also, also uh, offer the same. So once they have trained, they are able to transfer the knowledge to the nannies or the baby minders who are with the children. Right. Even if it is that um, mother or that parent who is going to be with the child, already they have now knowledge on what to do. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot control a child 100%. At some point, they may sneak around you. Yeah. They may sneak around you. Even as me as specialists, at some point, I've had this study happen in my house. Mm -hmm. But it, the point is, even if someone gets burnt, mm -hmm. you know what to do. Because what are the first all, steps? All of a sudden, they are, they are noisy yes. and from nowhere, yes. silence. Exactly. And at some point, you know you're tired. You're just chilling <laughs> in and the next minute is quiet. The next minute is screams now. Yeah. So now, because of the training, you're told now, if there's someone has been burnt or the child has been burnt, what mm -hmm. to do? What For this in this case is, mm -hmm. is cooling because there the process to stop the uh, someone who has burnt is cooling because it stopped the burning process. How do you cool? And you cool huh. with water. water. Just normal water. Ice. Running tap water. Ice. Uh, we can get to the ice as well. Okay. But the initial one, if you have running tap water, uh -huh. it is the, uh, the most ideal. If you don't have the tap water running, the tap, uh, the, the tap running, and you have a bucket there, you can scoop and irrigate because this is causing the cooling effect. If you have ice cubes, then you need to wrap ice cube with something so that you place it on the, on the skin because oh. direct ice cube will cause, co we will cause a problem later on. And especially if you, you, you may have find two types of uh, ice. It could be either water ice or dry ice. They actually mm. can burn you also, yeah. where you get a cold burn and, or and, a frostbite. And, and, and it, it can actually uh, um, stick, stick on the skin. Yes. So now that's why you wrap it with a cloth, okay? Then you cool there. For how long? Um, usually within 10, 10 minutes, you'll find the, the effect or the pain has subsided. Now, you mentioned water. Yes. Sometimes uh -huh. putting your hand that has just been burnt through water is even more painful uh -huh. than <coughs> whatever burnt you in the first place. Mm -hmm. I believe that is true. You're <laughs> saying that just do it. No. What happens is once you get burnt immediately... Mm. Because there is a heat that is there. Yeah. So how do you, you know, cool off? Cool how do you off. eliminate this heat? It's by cooling. So, so when you run that tap water there, or you get a jug and your irrigator in there, mm. where there is a burnt area, then it causes the cooling effect. Mm. So there is no progress. You're not continuous. Because now what happens, it, there is a continuation of damage to the cells. Remember here, we're talking about now first aid. Yes, it is now the first aid treatment. So after, pu uh, after putting that burnt area yes. through running water, yes. the next step is to wrap a cloth around it? Yes, or once you cool it completely, mm -hmm. then you can wrap on a clean, you know, clean, clean cloth or a clean material. If you have a first aid box, and majority of homes, I, I would, I would uh, really encourage us that let's buy first aid box or first aid kits. Buy so them. Let's buy them. It's mm. a small kit. may cost you maybe uh, 3,000 bob. This is a small, and it has those dressing in there, the right ones. Mm. Then you can use. And also there is a band cream that can be applied. I remember b back in the day, we used to have these. So you come about the Yoko GV. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> medically, you're not no longer using GV. has has been eliminated because of many factors. Because it's, I have seen um, it is not, has, does not have a lot of positivity in the treatment. But you do remember it, it, it was yes. the, it was the treatment for everything. Yes, yes, yes. And also there are those who also, at, apart from the cooling and applying the right material, then they use perhaps unga, yeah. Uh, Maziwa, or others will tell you, let's use uh, Even petroleum, products. petroleum product, gun oil. Mm. Um, how does these funny, funny things that yeah. are being uh, mm. talked about? The thing is, is, remember, whatever you do immediate on that ban, that what will, uh, what will end up saying, is this ban, how, how is this burnt area? How is this wound going to heal? Mm. So the way you manage is that now give 
even the end result. That's yeah. why the, the right mechanism, that's why water, I'm sure water is available everywhere. Mm -hmm. That then you, that the right one to use is that one because we know we might be coming from um, a resource uh, strained settings. So right. water would be the right one. Mm -hmm. And from there on, take them to the nearest hospital uh -huh. for further investigation and further treatment. But one thing that I want you to also mention. Yes. Panic. Panic. A parent has just come home. Yes. And mtoto amechomeka when the, under the nanny's watch. Uh -huh. Kelele inaanza kugombanisha the nanny. Mm -hmm. And now there is panic in the room. Mm -hmm. And now there is chaos. Even, it's even scaring the child. Now. Okay. Now, you see, if you, if you, for example, Ram, if you go to your house and you find that case scenario and you start screaming, so whose fault is it now? Because one, you're not actually addressing the problem. Mm -hmm. You're actually aggravating. Because as you're screaming and you're talking all this loudly, mm -hmm. you're not helping this burnt child or the burnt victim or this, this person who has been burnt. Yeah. So the first thing is, if you have knowledge and the skill, I believe that's the best the best weapon that you can always, because you're not, when you have knowledge, uh, what to do, you know what needs to be done, mm -hmm. then why would you agree? You will, yes, there is that aspect of panic, yeah. but it's not going to be heightened because you'll be doing something. Mm -hmm. Either they scream or cause a lot of, um, you know, mess around because they don't know what to do. Some point it could be an injury at home and mm -hmm. you find um, a nun in your house manager has to call the parent to come home. Instead of you empowering that uh, nanny, that there's something he sh can do to take the, either to attend there, or alternatively from attending there, then they are able now to transport that victim to the nearest facility. Mm -hmm. You drive there and meet up them there. So you want to drive all the way home. <laughs> you want to drive all the way home. Then, then this is a them. You see, now, what are you doing? You're wasting, wasting time. You're wasting time. And as you're wasting time, what is happening to the injury? It is aggravating. So even the recovery or the therapy part of it, it is delayed. Remember we talked about the cost. That's how you accumulate the so, cost. Sometimes some of these nannies even panic. When uh -huh. the child gets burnt, now they keep quiet. Yes. They can't call. Mm -hmm. They can't do anything. They keep quiet and mm -hmm. try to do their own mm -hmm. first aid yes. with the child. Yes. And, then, then, and this you find because you're finding that is because they have inadequate, in perhaps in the training. Mm. And uh, that's what we try to sensitize as much, to go to even to churches, uh, to go to the religious institutions mm -hmm. within community where you can gather them, at least give knowledge um, on these skills on how to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, because now whenever you have all this information, look at the cases even on the roads. We're having tankers, you know, spilling. Yeah. And you can see it's fuel. Uh -huh. And the next, a slight spark, what are you going to have? A very devastating Injuries out there, mm. but mostly is because some people don't have this knowledge. You think they do, but they but really they don't. don't. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the aspect of uh, a fire outbreak inside a home, yeah. in a home or in an organization. Yeah. Let's put them all together because yes. of time. We can mm -hmm. clamp them mm -hmm. all together. Mm -hmm. um, safety precautions. Mm -hmm. Once there is a fire, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes people don't notice it or, uh, until it's too late when yes. you see the smoke. smoke yeah. and the, the color in the room is not uh, the normal one. Yeah. Safety precautions once there's a fire outbreak mm -hmm. in the home. At home, the first we want to identify where is the source of fire, where is it coming from. Yeah. Then from there on, it will be telling you, are you able to handle, if it's a fire, for example, you have a fire extinguisher, how are you going to extinguish it? Mm -hmm. Or perhaps if uh, you have a blanket that you can go and cover that fire. Then the next is to exit. As you have switched off the put off the fire, because there is smoke. Mm -hmm. So what I will tell you when you're going out, then go low, meaning stoop. If you cannot stoop or crawl, that would be the best. Why? Oxygen is more concentrated on the lower side than the smoke, because smoke is lighter, goes up. Mm -hmm. These are toxins. If you're standing, you inhale them. But if you're low, you stoop and go out, it is very safe for you. Mm -hmm. So that would be the way to get out of that building. Yeah. Then uh, call for the fire brigade. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the good thing is now calling for the fire brigade is just calling through using the 999 or 999 or 911 or 112. Some Kenyans complain that when you call the fire brigade, they take a lot of time to get there. Uh, with the history, what I've seen, and yeah. I've worked with them for quite a significant number of years, is mm. that... Most of us don't have, as a citizen, they don't have these emergency numbers. You start calling someone so-and-so, who can I call in fire brigade? 
you're not calling the communication center. Mm. So if you call them late, they'll come late. That's a ripple okay. effect. Okay. Yes, that's why the most of the time they come. That's why we insist, please, public, is that they need to know the emergency numbers. And those the emergency numbers, most of now, they're coordinated by the, the, the control room at the national level. Then you can get across all of them. Then the case of the workplaces also. Mm. Mm. Every workplace ought to have um, a policy in regard to the fire safety. Mm -hmm. And it is not a request, actually a compliance from the Ministry of Labor. Yeah. That you ought to have a compliance. Every business must have. Every, I think there's a certificate. Yes. You, that, that's now comes even the bylaw because the certificate you forget from the city council. Yeah. But the compliance from the Occupation Health and Safety Act, mm -hmm. it is there that you need to have a fire safety policy, meaning you need to have people who are trained in fire response. Yeah. You first have fire extinguishers. You have installation detectors. All that. Fire need to assembly be points. Yes, you need to have exit, emergency exit mm -hmm. that are working then assembly point, then also have those emergency numbers or the responders who can come and help you. Mm -hmm. Those are the policies that you need to have in the, in the company. Mm -hmm. So this has to be laid down. And the only way it can be very efficient, especially at the workplaces, is when you have new staff, there is induction. Then there is what is called now compliance trainings, the health, occupation, health and safety training. There is a fire safety training that is a mandatory. Every organization must take it. And these actually trainings are, are annual. You don't take it today and you'll do another training after five years. No. Mm. It is every year it every is recommended year. for you to do that. So do that training for your staff? For the staff for in the, the organization. That you're working with at your business, at your organization, yes. every year. Yes. And it doesn't matter whether it is a school, mm. it is a, a religious institution, be it a hospital, be it even those community levels. So it is everyone's responsibility to ensure that. And if they do it in organizations, mm -hmm. we should also have trainings where mm -hmm. families attend. Yes. I love that. So the, these, once you have drained the now, the, you see when the employees who are in the companies, mm -hmm. you also say they're still the same community. Same, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have already done the training, they will, they will transfer the knowledge again within their own community. Mm -hmm. So the homes are safe or the community is safe. You see? Now, there's something you said mm -hmm. that you said that first of all, recognize the source of the fire. Yeah. What if you can't? What if the fire is too much? Yes. In Mekushtua, mm -hmm. and now you are in a state of panic. Mm -hmm. You're thinking, what do I do? Who do I call? You can't find a phone. You don't know what to do. So now, in that case, your safety comes first. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you, know you can do is get out of that building. Just get out first. Just get out of that building because as the fire is growing what is happening you have toxic materials that are burning mm -hmm. and these are like for example you're getting carbon monoxide carbon dioxide all these you're inhaling as you keep on inhaling what are they happening they have a direct effect to your health so they will lead you one you have, we all have blood vision the next thing you can um, collapse out. in there mm -hmm. so you want to be outside where it is safe now start calling for help when you're already outside some people start screaming when they're inside the house. Moto! That's how scream when you're inside, who <laughs> is really going to help you. So yeah. you need to be outside where you can now summon help when you're safe already. If you have someone who is, st you know, who is stuck inside the building and they're not able to, because that's why firefighters, if you call them early, the mm. first thing they do, they don't actually come and fight the fire first. They actually come inside the building, rescue or save their life, mm -hmm. then they start fighting the fire, fire to prevent, to protect the, pro uh, to save the property. Mm -hmm. That's how the case scenario is. So if you call them late, you will have a problem. In some estates, you'll find when there is a fire outbreak, people now start gathering mm -hmm. around there, mm -hmm. and then some youths take ladders and they start breaking the windows. They start, you know, pouring water inside mm -hmm. uh, uh, the house. Mm -hmm. How safe is that? It is, some point you'll find they're doing the right thing. Sometimes uh -huh. not all the time they'll do the right thing. They want to help, but some point they don't have the right knowledge, the skill, or the mechanism to respond to that. And that's yeah. where you find they want to help. However, they do help also because they will come with buckets of water. Yeah. They will come with maybe soil. Others have fire extinguishers. They will come and help. Mm -hmm. But they talked about the identifying what is burning because some point you may use the wrong media to put off the fire. For example, it is electrical fire. You throw water on it. What happens? You're making it worse. Exactly. So that's why it is a point of assess. Are we able to help here or not? So that's why you talk about 
the safety but part now people starting with in you. the estate men might not understand yeah. what has caused fire in mm -hmm. block b yes so they will just start pouring water they don't know that it's an electrical fault mm -hmm. What do you do? Do you leave it to burn so that an expert can come and assess? I think what I will say again in, in, in line with what we had mentioning about prevention. Uh -huh. In those courts, because in a court, and you know each other, uh -huh. why don't you just call a specialist just to come and take you through? It will take just a few hours. Tell you what to do. And this will involve the community, the whole, the whole of the households, including the children. All of them together there. And you do those practicals. So in case this court... Ha they, this court has done that sensitization, the other one, the other one, and the other one, like, or even within a community. And some will say it is only happens maybe even on high ends are able to do that. No. Mm. Fire can happen anywhere. So if it is with those areas that with the court, let them get someone to take them through. If it is within the, the some of the pockets we have, like in the slums, like be it like Madare, we have Kayole, we have Kibera, yeah. we have professionals who usually go there, perhaps on a weekly basis just to train those community. Mm -hmm. So the point is just for you to go there and attend. That's it. Now, I'm looking at a, ch a parent mm -hmm. whose child is getting electrocuted. Yeah. And you don't know, you, you don't know what to do. You know, people, people have very funny ways of, of, of handling that. Mm -hmm. Maybe <laughs> mm -hmm. let's create aware, awareness of that in regards okay. to that. Okay. My child is being electrocuted. Yes. I'm a parent, I'm yeah. seeing, or my friend, not, yeah. not necessarily a parent, a, parent. Okay. a okay. friend of mine is being electrocuted. I'm seeing you can see them it. being elec ele electrocuted. What do I do? Now, if you, now you already know what the causation of the problem. You know yes. the danger. So In this case, you know, the, you know, you the, know the danger. So the first thing is, I will not tell you to go touch that person because they are already live. If you touch them, you'll get the same ripple effect. Yeah. So the first thing you want to go is go and switch off that electricity. Some if it is a generator, uh, switch it off. Some people look for sticks. When I'm well, it is not very... It might really help because you might, you might get the cable off, hmm. the live cable off the person who is getting electrocuted at that particular moment, yeah. but does not make that area safe for you. You may go and stop on it by mistake. So yes, the first thing will tell you, switch off. Once you know it is switched off, the area is safe. No, not only for the victim or your friend or your child, mm -hmm. it is even safe for you. Because say for example, in this case, um, if it is one person who has touched that life wire, they're already now electrocuted, and perhaps they have, it is maybe a big um, electrical pole, um, they, they, there is you know, massive currency going through. Yeah. So if you touch that, perhaps it's going to give you um, a cardiac arrest or so. So there is a procedure that you need to attend to this person. Perhaps come and do CPR. Mm. Now, when this live it is still on there, it's not going to help. So go straight on, switch it off. Once the power is off, come and attend to this. You go to the, you, you, you go to the main, main switch. Yeah, exactly, yes. Now, what go to if the, the person switch. being electrocuted is being electrocuted alone? <laughs> <laughs> at, uh, at the main, no, no, uh, 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 you are at the main switch. Uh -huh. Let's say you send your son uh, mm. uh, because parents mm. send mm. their sons. Mm. It's just, yeah. uh, interestingly, in, in yeah. Africa, ni vijana ndo najui maneno ya yes, 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 now, this is how you have to respond as an emergency. Because one, why did you send them? One, are they qualified to do what you told them to do? Perhaps they're not. And most likely, most likely they might not be. So you expose them to the danger. So now you have to respond to that as an incident now. Yeah. So again, the same procedure will happen. Mm. Safety, dictate, Safety. it has to start with you. Ah. So now you have also to ensure that it is now switched off. Then you start attending now to the victim. So you see, it is a, you have to also always to be, this is more of self-awareness. Self-awareness. It is self-awareness. Right. right. So that you know now, this has happened, what do I need to do? Um, perhaps you're boiling water and um, the souffle is there and a the child goes and, you know, they're deep in there or perhaps they are playing around, there is a basin and they're inside there. Mm. You see, the first thing you want to go is get, remove this the victim out, out of the danger. Mm. That's what we want to do first. Mm. Remove the child out of the danger. Then you can pour this water or you can cool it later on. Because sometimes they play around and then they knock the stove off. Yes. And then that, all that hot water mm -hmm. pours on them. Yes. In a water chakula, mm -hmm. hot even water, mm -hmm. hot boiling mm -hmm. beans or something. Mm -hmm. 
So all that as as a first thing you say now you're responding. This is a first aid now mission. Yeah, yeah. And it is critical for you to, to attend to the victims the right way. Mm. Otherwise, they end up having all these um, scars. significant scars mm. uh, and it, it takes time even to, to treat them. Even some of these therapeutic medication is very costly. Mm -hmm. One, uh, perhaps one of them, you might find it's costing across to about 10,000. It is just one lotion for them to be applying mm. of those contractures. So, again, the point here is more <coughs> to prevention than to respond. All right. If we happen out to have an incident, then let's respond. Now, um, in case someone is in their home, mm -hmm. their house, mm -hmm. and they, there's that gas leak, someone has scared of your gas bahali, what do you do? First thing. If then you find that, the first thing you'd want to go is, because that tells you you already know you have a gas cylinder in the house, Yes. that the first is to go and get that cylinder outside. Not to throw it, but to get it out of the house. Pick it slowly. Pick it, just pick it normally, and go disconnect it and pick it and take it outside. But don't light anything, because the gas is hanging in the air. Mm. Then when it is outside, open the windows and doors, aerate or ventilate mm -hmm. the room. Mm -hmm. So the gas now will be out. Once completed, there's no smell. Now you can return back. Now this cylinder, before you return back, perhaps is a valve that had an issue. Mm. If you don't know how to fix it, just call the dealer. They'll tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Or take it directly to them. They will go and, and assess it. If it is safe for you, then you can return it back to the house. Yeah. Um, if it is faulty, then you can now go and they can, they can change uh, that cylinder on your behalf. Wow. So those are the gas safety uh, regulations. But if you're able to, uh, the right procedure is to have the gas cylinder outside. That's what the regulation is. Now, there's something you mentioned a bit earlier on, and you said that we have personal protective equipment. Yes. What are these equipment that we need in our homes and in organizations mm -hmm. that you'd advise us to acquire? if we do not have them and if we do what are they that needs replacement what are these equipment that you you, you are referring to when you say personal protective equipment equip okay mm. um it, it it's a very big uh, umbrella of yeah. appliances, so things, uh, yeah, yeah, appliances. Yeah, know, but yeah. in the home setup mm. what i'll talk of one is like first aid kit mm -hmm. a first aid box contain the supplies that can help you when you're attending to a burnt uh, casualty mm -hmm. You have another thing as a fire extinguisher. A fire extinguisher comes the same way. It will help you to fight off the fire. Mm -hmm. We have fire blankets also. The fire one, blanket? A fire blanket, yes. And it's a cheap, is about like one, you can get it as, at a cost of about 1,500. Michael, let me get it straight. Yes. Maybe someone has not understood you well. Yes. You're saying that there is a blanket, mm -hmm. not, not the duvet that, are, that we use to cover ourselves. Mm -hmm. There is a blanket specifically meant yes. for fire. Is that yes. what you say? Yes, there is. Uh -huh. And it comes with different sizes. It's a very easy. And this blanket, uh, it's packed in a small container mm -hmm. where you come and place it on the wall. The only thing that you do when there is a fire outbreak, there's, there is a souffle catching on fire, mm. then you just pull it, cover. Cover. Yeah. And once you cover what it does, it's smother, it cuts off oxygen, and the fire goes out. Good. And it is cheap to use it. Mm. You don't have to go, you know, to um, a certain institution to learn on how to use this. This is, this is as simple as that. Mm. Then the case, and the other thing you would want to, I would encourage people to have, is fire extinguishers. Yeah. Then as we're doing that, I also encourage our policymakers that we need to have these policies enforced all the way. Mm. Because we don't have a big, um, because, you know, once we have them sensitizing because you, if you look at the, sh the, the chiefs, uh, we have the members, you know, MCAs and the like, they can also sensitize the community to do mm -hmm. all these. Mm -hmm. And that will be a goodwill as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From the national level, they're really trying as much to help, mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't reached everyone. However, like this year, it was very good because we managed to get uh, different counties participating in this. Previously, we only had um, Nairobi participating mm -hmm. for the fire safety and burns awareness. This year, we had Mombasa coming in, we had Nakuru, we had Kisumu coming in. So, this information is starting now to trickle down to the rest. Mm -hmm. And we're looking forward to how where we can trickle down all the way to mm -hmm. the rest of the counties. Wow, wow. And all the way to, to every, uh, every homestead. I'm aware you recently had your fire uh, safety and burns awareness week. Yes. That was last week. It was last week. It was last week. How, how, how was it? 
Uh, very good. People uh, came. Very good. Yes, it, we did. Um, it has been. And actually, this is actually a national event. I said, but it started all the way back 2009. Yeah. So every year, within the month of August, you'll find we have the fire safety, um, fire safety and burns awareness week. Mm. But because of a few challenges here and there, uh, logistical is, um, we had elections coming in. So now it was moved to October. Mm. So last mm. year, uh, the last, sorry, the last month, um, from Tuesday through Friday, we had a sensitization mm -hmm. and activity in different areas. We had different activities happening um, countrywide. And the final day, we also had a procession. In Nairobi, we had a procession. In Mombasa, they had a procession. Mm -hmm. Kisumi, they had a procession. Mm -hmm. Then also, we conducted what we call a fire drill mm -hmm. within an organization just to test the, uh, the preparedness of that organization and also to create more awareness to the uh, nation. The procession, we have, uh, we were giving flyers, we were giving handbooks, we had even reading material. We actually have mm -hmm. a curriculum. Mm. If wow. you go to the Bands, um, Bands uh, Society of Kenya, the website there, and many organizations, including even um, Ethnomed Healthcare, if you go to the website, you'll find that edition. is actually right now we have a 10th edition of Fire Safety Manual. It includes all these information all the way even to the emergency numbers. Wow, wow. So this is more trying to reach out. And it was, mm -hmm. uh, you asked, was it, did we have many people coming in? Yes. We had most of the stakeholders, just to name a few, Ban Society of Kenya, we have Kenya International Hospital, we have National Disaster Management Unit, which is the wing of the police. We have uh, private uh, stakeholders like Ethnomed Healthcare, we have St. John, Kenya Red Cruise, wow. we have Kenya Power and Lightning, Kenya that Pension was Fund, was it was all this because they're all stakeholders. Then also we had uh, members of the public coming in. Now, let's talk about enterprises and, uh, and, and, and SMEs. Yes. You've seen this happen. Yes. Just case in point, Gikomba. Mm -hmm. You wake up one morning, Mm -hmm. Oh, fire outbreak in Gikomba. Mm -hmm. And they happened so frequently. Yes. Um, is... is, is, is uh, what your, your 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 comment on this? What are your thoughts in regards to this? Is this lack of preparation, lack of awareness, lack of training? Why do we have some cases, uh, so many cases, okay. in, 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 in of, of SMEs mm -hmm. getting their businesses burned, especially mm -hmm. in Gikomba? And mm -hmm. maybe your recommendation. Um, well, I I I may not want to talk on behalf of. Uh, as, as, as I will speak on behalf as ethnomed and also uh, as an individual yes, perspective. Yes, please, yes, please. There's so many causations of fire. Mm. It could be a case of negligence. Mm -hmm. Someone maybe left um, a plant uh, lit and uh, it ought to be switched off. There like could be cooking, so many reasons cooking. as to why. Yeah. There's so many. So, so most you find their negligences or maybe it is arson or it is a case of maybe equipment has worn out, equipment mm -hmm. failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that we usually leave it for the um, investigators or the auditors to come and check yeah. what cost it. Let the investigators so, do yeah, let the, but maybe your recommendation. Us, yes. Yeah. Now our recommendation is the yeah. safety comes in first. Yes. Yeah. So uh, at the Kikomba area or any enterprise, the first thing you want to do is do a risk assessment. And a risk assessment tells you what are you likely to you know get exposed, and and this this point in time you you find. So it's the electrical cables that are not done the right way. Then you'll have now to contact um, a, a certified electrician to come and help. If it is a case where you're finding that people are cooking, uh, is a kitchen, mm. then the kitchen, does it, that is, it, is it near? Perhaps you have any uh, flammable materials that are near there. So perhaps you may need to get those flammable materials away mm. from uh, where people are cooking because it's an open fire. If you have to burn a trash out there, it has to be controlled because we don't want to spread the fire. So these are the mechanisms that you ought to apply um, mm -hmm. out there. And wow. now right. uh, you also we have a specialist who will come and do an assessment, risk assessment, and they do an audit and tell you, all right, this is what you need to follow from, from one point all the way to the um to, to the end of it so All these right. they give you a holistic idea on what to do then also the fire brigade they will mm. come also and advise you so this is what it, it, it's it's more, more a part of where you we are not following the right uh, yeah. measures or mm. all the procedures and that's where we are ending up having the fatality thank you so thank you. information is that we all need to play part in this we need 
to come in and prevent and participate in the prevention part of right. uh, the fires. I, I, I want us to bring this discussion to a close, uh, okay. Michael, and okay. uh, maybe to give you time to have a, pa a, a parting shot, yeah. have a final word, wrap this whole mm -hmm. discussion up and maybe talk to Kenyans watching it today. Mm -hmm. That's your camera. Okay. Your final word, parting shot, as we bring this to, to, to a close. Okay. So viewers out there, uh, this is not the first time, neither is it going to be perhaps the end. Fires have been there and we find fires and we end up having burns. So it is everyone's responsibility that to safeguard against uh, fires. So it is important for us to go source for the materials or the knowledge, we seek knowledge where we can um, understand what to do, the prevention part. Then in case someone gets burnt, what do we do from their home setup or where they're burnt all, all right. the way to the hospital. With all that, um, this is what I can really, really commend most of us to keep on practicing. And we be uh, each other's uh, keeper, mm -hmm. this kind of brother's keeper. And Asana. we make our nation a better place to live. Asana, Asana. <laughs> that is uh, Michael Gitao. Yes. My brother, thank you so much. You're doing a good job. Karibu. Keep up uh, yeah. that uh, fantastic job, that fantastic work. I know that people have learned today from this. Yes, yes, I Thank believe so. Thank you so much so. for coming. Yeah. Asante sana. Asante sana. All right. That brings us to the end of this discussion right here on Why in the Morning. But remember, we still have more coming up your way. My name is Ram Maguko. Keep it Why in the Morning.